And uh, the reason that I'm here is uh, the, the film originally, my intention was to document the U.S. politics and policies uh, that affect this uh, Central American country. And while I was there, I came across the story of the disappearance, torture, and death of anti-mining activist Marcelo Rivera and how it relates to the Canadian corporation Pacific Rim. Um, we're going to be world premiering this film uh, this Thursday, the 17th, at 7.30 p.m. in Toronto at the Toronto Underground Cinema. And there will also be a rally at 4.30 p.m. Uh, here in Ottawa at the Eternal Flame. It's endorsed by 50 Canadian organizations. And, uh, and uh, I, I wanted, one thing that I wanted to, to say pretty clearly is that I, I'm, I'm really eager to, to share with Canadians the story of, the, of, the story of Marcelo Rivera as it relates to Canadian mining corporations. That, the story that, that I came across that really changed my life. And uh, my, my intention was not uh, to come across this story. It sort of came... It came to me, and I, and I know now that uh, as, a, as a filmmaker, it's my responsibility to, to share this story with you, uh, the Canadian people, and, and how your, your corporations uh, act and interact in, uh, in other countries. And for more on that, I'd like to introduce uh, MP John McKay. Uh, thank you, uh, Jamie. My name is John McKay. I'm the Member of Parliament for uh, Scarborough Guildwood and the sponsor of Bill C-300. Uh, Bill C-300 has, um, after a year and a half of being in the Foreign Affairs Committee, is now uh, back on the floor of the House and will be scheduled for its next hour of debate on October the 7th. Um, bill C-300 is a, a fairly modest bill and uh, would require that Canadian corporations that um, are outside of corporate social responsibility that the government conduct an investigation, make a finding, and in the event that uh, there is a finding that they are outside of environmental standards, international environmental standards, or international uh, corporate social responsibility standards that the government's involvement with that company would be withdrawn, uh, namely through EDC, uh, Export Development Corporation of Canada, or uh, Canada Pension Plan, or promotional activities on the part of Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, ironically, uh, last week, in the last uh, couple of hours of the testimony before the Foreign Affairs Committee, the uh, CEO for Pacific Rim came before the committee and um, gave his uh, version of uh, what's happened to his company over the number of years, uh, which has been somewhat documented in uh, Jamie's film. Um, needless to say, the, uh, his views of what uh, the facts were and the film's version of what the facts might be uh, are at variance. And so I said to him in questioning, well, wouldn't this be in some respects an ideal situation for, uh, for C-300? It's uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, a dispute resolution mechanism uh, conducted by the Crown uh, in right of a foreign affairs minister or minister of international trade. And, um, and uh, the CEO... Uh, said he wasn't as familiar with the provisions of C-300 as maybe he should be, but the um, law professor from the University of Toronto, Audrey Macklin, said, uh, yes, in some respects, this was an ideal um, case study of how um, uh, a dispute between um, uh, a Canadian mining company and uh, a, co a country and uh, Indigenous folks uh, could actually be resolved, uh, that uh, we, we could actually provide a, a mechanism for uh, some settling of some of these disputes. Now, Jamie's story and others, uh, uh, Emily Wilson and, uh, and Stephen Schnorr and, uh, and, uh, and Malcolm Rogge have documented other stories in other countries uh, this is not unique, unfortunately. This is not a unique story. Um, it is a building uh, situation. It is something that Canadians want uh, their government to respond to. And uh, part of the purpose of uh, us being here today is to encourage those who are interested in the issue of corporate social responsibility to bring this to, to the attention of MPs, of senators, and the prime minister, and the cabinet ministers, uh, that they want something done here, that it's not right that, uh, in effect, Canadian money through our Canada Pension Plan or through um, taxpayer-funded EDC is effectively trapped 
uh, in supporting uh, these, these countries, uh, uh, these companies, um, who find themselves sometimes in situations doing things which uh, maybe they wish they didn't find themselves in. So um, I encourage uh, all of you to um, go to Toronto and uh, see Jamie's film, and, um, and hopefully it'll get a wide uh, distribution. Hopefully it'll be a point of uh, debate, a point of um, uh, discussion, and, um, and hopefully uh, the uh, interaction of all of the, the films uh, and uh, all of the interest on the part of many Canadians will uh, facilitate the pushing of C-300 uh, forward to uh, Royal Ascent. So thank you, and we're certainly open to questions. Ask Jamie Moffat uh, a bit more about the Canadian connection. How is Canada implicated in the in the murder in El Salvador? Uh, what what we came across was that um, the Pacific Rim Mining Company has been operating in the Cabanas district of El Salvador for for quite a while, and the, their their actions have essentially um, caused a massive disturbance in that in that community. Um, my intention as a filmmaker wasn't even to tell this story, but um, so many of the interviewees that I'd come across uh, kept mentioning the, the disappearance of, of this anti-mining activist. And it's become pretty clear that the, uh, the three people who have, who have been murdered in, in the Cabanas district um, were all anti-mining activists. And, uh, and it, it appears as though Pacific Rim's influence has, uh, has pretty significantly uh, disrupted that, that community. Um, to try and say this as, as clear as possible that, that um, your, your Canadian mining companies are, are operating in other countries and they're acting in ways that, that, um, that sicken, um, injure, and potentially kill people. And, uh, and as an American, I, I wanted to come up and, and make sure that you all were aware of that. What did you learn about Marcelo Rivera as a person? Uh, he was an educator. And uh, he had originally traveled to, uh, to Honduras to learn about the uh, mining actions that were there, um, were horrified by what, what was happening, and then returned to his community and shared that information, which was, which was one of the key reasons that there was such a huge uh, response to Pacific Rim's intention to, uh, to mine at the El Dorado, at the El Dorado mine. Um, the, the folks there are they're nothing short of inspiring that, uh, that they've chosen literally to risk their lives uh, to defend uh, to defend their land and their, and their livelihood. How was he murdered? He was, uh, he was kidnapped uh, in the town of Villa Bosco. He was tortured for uh, at least seven days. Uh, his nose was cut off, his fingernails were removed, and then he was strangled, and his body was thrown uh, down a well in a cornfield that I uh, got to visit. The material authors are currently in, in court, uh, but the intellectual author has yet to be officially determined. Um, a number of the folks uh, that are there are, are, are asking the question that who would really benefit the most from the silence of, uh, of the local leader of this, of this larger anti-mining movement.